Thank you, Justin. And I'm sorry. Thank you. You guys are lucky to have two instructors who feel very strongly about their opinions and who feel passionate about sharing their opinions. Um, I think, however, uh, that we should all know that we are agents of change. You are not just passive observers. We are not just passive observers in this life, right? We aren't just born to fulfill a role, to fulfill a job, and to just die. We take opinions, we take stances, and we are made to take stances. Our humanity is based on taking stances, based on you evaluating a set of values that you create and determining by these values whether or not something fits it. And so, yes, there are Palestinians who have been harmed, and there are Israelis who have been harmed. I very obviously represent one opinion, but it is not an opinion that I will share with you. It's just mere facts. 11,100 plus Palestinians have been killed since October 7th. This number is already extremely outdated. Why is that? It's because Israel has not stopped bombing Gaza since October 7th. Of them, about 8,000 are children. That is a fact. That is not an opinion you must have an opinion on. That is just something you must know. Gaza has been under blockade since 2005. A blockade means that the borders are the most militarized borders in the war world. It means that food coming in is regulated. It means that food going out, the food coming in is regulated. Medicine coming in is regulated. Everything is regulated. Before October 7th, over 50% of Gaza was considered um, hunger, I, there's a term for it. Like they're, 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 they're at risk for, in their health. That, is, that, that does not come at, in a vacuum. So I think when someone asks you to, to not take a stance, that is dangerous. Because we are all agents of change and we are, all have the ability to voice that opinion. There is, a, there is a letter that I will ask you to Google. I know that you're on the CS. It's called um, Responsible AI. I'll, I'll, I'll get the exact text because I think that is what is relevant to you as people who will start making these um, technologies. The Responsible AI community in solidarity with Gaza and the Palestinian people. And that that letter, if you if you have a chance to Google it and I'll send it to your lecturer to send it to you, maps out how AI reflects the racialized institutions that and the biases of the racialized institutions that thought of it. And it really is in the context of in the US with law surveillance and things like that. Um, but in Gaza and in the context of Palestine, in 2021, it was considered the first AI war, which means that they that Israeli and weapons weapons companies around the world are using AI to develop a more sharpened and more precise way to target people. That is a decision made by students 10 years ago who decided to be CS majors. That is not a decision made in a way that you have no hands in, right? We are all responsible for our actions. We are not responsible for our governments, but we are responsible to hold our governments accountable. So I can go on and on. There are so many facts I can share with you that you do not need to have an opinion on but just know that these are facts and I hope that you develop opinion on based on these facts. But besides reading these letters, besides thinking about what it means to be an ethical knowledge producer and an ethical knowledge consumer, I ask you that you also hold your reps accountable, demand a ceasefire. Since the, a Shifa hospital, one of the main hospitals in Gaza has been bombarded and had, has, has been raided, there, are, there is no electricity going in, there is no water. On the second day of war, Benjamin Netanyahu, not Benjamin Netanyahu, the, the defense minister said that um, we are going to do, uh, this is me paraphrasing, an entire siege on Gaza. We will stop the water, electricity, and uh, food. These are human, sorry, these are human animals and I will act accordingly. I'm sorry, I have a very loud voice. These are human animals and I will act accordingly. Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, described the people of, he said, he described this conflict as um, as a conflict between the people, creatures of light and creatures of darkness. 
we can imagine who the creatures of darkness are. So when people are, when, when entities are described as human animals, described as creatures of darkness, what they're saying is these are human that are killable. They're not human. They are beyond the realm of humanity, which makes them killable, right? Not only does it make them killable, it means that no one is held accountable for that death. And what you can do is you can hold your officials accountable for that death. You can hold the university that funds $2 billion in weapon manufacturer companies and uses your tuition dollars to do that accountable. This isn't, you are not neutral. We are not neutral. You are not just consumers. You are decision makers. You are people who are able to have opinions and have power to change. That is what movement is. Please think for yourself. And I, and I thank you all for taking the time to listen to me. And it was, and thank you for inviting me. You can, to know about activities that are happening on campus, there is um, the Graduate Students for Justice in Palestine uh, are on Instagram and uh, Bears for Palestine is another group. There are people who are doing work and you can support them and join them as well. Thank you.